Good morning. And welcome to worship here at the First Presbyterian Church of Woodbridge. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. There is um, just a few things I want to highlight. First, PW meets tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Um, we also, if you have not yet signed up for Easter flowers and you want to, the sign-up sheet is here. We also have the, the schedule for Holy Week and Easter in the bulletin, and there are still some baby bottles left if you have um, not gotten one or if your one is already full and you would like a second. The same is true for the one great hour of sharing fish. If you still need some fish, please see me after worship. Are, are there any other announcements that need to come before us at this time? Seeing none, then let us begin our worship with our prelude. Thank you. 
morning. Good morning. Please join me in our call to worship. A rich feast awaits those who call upon the Lord. God offers to us all the bounty of God's love. How we have thirsted for hope and peace. How we have longed for joy and love. God continually blesses and heals us. Praise be to God for God's steadfast love. Let us pray. Holy One, when we are alone in the desert, wandering through the wilderness, we call to you, for you are our help. Our souls cling to you. Come, God, and hold us up. Come, bring your presence to our souls and fill us with your peace. In the shadow of your wings, we will sing for joy. Amen. Please rise as you are able and join us in our first hymn, 65. Dear friends, God calls us to the bread of heaven, and sometimes we turn away from it. Together, let us pray our prayer of confession. God of mercy, we long to come when you call, yet often do not. When we are most alone, we fail to turn to you. When we are most afraid, we do not always think we can turn to you. When we are lost, hurting, and in pain, we fail to realize how much we suffer. We refuse to ask for help. We lash out at others. We numb our hearts. We hide. Forgive us. But you, O oh God, are faithful. You see us and know us and love us as we are. In times of trial, you show us the way through. 
receive us once again and have mercy on us. As we seek your presence, help us place our trust in the grace of your heart and help us begin again. Amen. Dear friends, God's love for us and grace to us are higher than we have imagined, deeper than we have guessed. Before we have asked, God's mercies are already given. Thanks be to God.
I may need to owe you. <laughs> oh, that's right, it's you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Holy God, plant your word and your grace in our hearts where it may be nurtured and grow. By sunlight and shade, water and nourishment, may your word grow our lives in beauty and in truth. Amen. Our first lesson is from the book of Psalms 63, 1 to 8. O God, you are my God. I seek you, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in, in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips would praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast and my mouth praises you with joyful lips when I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in, in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wing I sing for joy. My soul clings to you, your right, and your up, your, your right hand upholds me. The word of the Lord. The second lesson comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 through 9. Ho, everyone who thirst, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that that does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that you do not know shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is still near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are, are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. May, ga may God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's holy words. As we enter the halfway point in Lent, these scripture passages remind us that our God is a God of abundance. God's love never ends. God's grace is eternal. God's compassion overflows. This is an important fact to remember in the middle of Lent because Lent is a time of repentance, fasting, and introspection. And it, can get, and it can be easy to get caught up in every way in which we fail to live up to 
God's call or will in our lives. We can at times see our humanity as something that needs to be controlled. We can get caught up in thinking that humanness is so sinful that it is never good enough for us, for each other, for God. And although God wants us to live righteous lives, God also made us as human beings. Our humanness, our ease of falling short is built into us. And God knows that because God made us that way. And God loves us even because of that, or maybe just because of that. The author of Psalm 63 seeks an experience of God's presence in their lives. They are waiting for an answer to prayer. And they know and they pray confidently because they know God will answer because of God's faithfulness. And because our lives belong to God, we know that we can depend on God as our true source of life and life eternal. Because we yearn for God's presence in our lives, our souls thirst for God and God's word and direction in our lives. Even in our human failings and shortcomings, we know of divine steadfast love for us each and every day. This love is a primary feature of God's character as a forgiving and a redeeming God. And because human life depends on God's faithfulness, we rest in this assurance of the love and care of God for us. Psalm 63, in so many ways, is a wonderful introduction to the passage of Isaiah 55. This is a beloved passage for so many of us because it reminds us that God will provide for us every single day of our lives. God's words come. Whatever you need will be provided for you. Don't worry if you don't have enough money. Don't worry and don't question if you are good enough or not. Everything you need will be provided for you because you are God's beloved children. This reminder is so important because it is so easy for us to be critical of ourselves. It's so easy to think that we are never good enough for anyone, especially God. And yet, God is clear. We are good enough and God will provide what we need. All we need to do is come to God. And then once we come and have what we need, God reminds us to keep seeking God. Isaiah reminds us that King David knew to seek God's love and grace for his life even when he acted in ways which put him a little further away from God's will in his life. King David was blessedly human, just like us. And just like King David, in times of our own darkness and uncertainty, we are to seek God and God's will whenever and however we can. 
It is in those dark times, those times when it can be hard even to know where to look for God, that God is there calling us out of the darkness in ways that will transform our lives. Kate Bowler, I love this book. It's her book called No Cure for Being Human. It, te- it is sort of a memoir of when she was diagnosed with, um, sev- with a rare form of cancer at 35 and how she struggled to make sense of all of it. And she writes... We find it especially difficult to talk about anything chronic, meaning any kind of pain, emotional or physical, that abides and lives with us constantly. We rely on a hearty can-do spirit surmounting all obstacles, but not all problems can be overcome. So often we are defined by the troubles we live with rather than the things we conquer. Any persistent suffering requires being afraid, but who can stay awake to to fear for so long? My friend Luke once told me that the Christian tradition has special language for our three experiences of time, tragic, apocalyptic, and pastoral. What you are describing right now is tragic time, he said. Tragic time is the grand theodicy. The problem of evil has swept away the illusion that all things will be made right. And suddenly we wonder at the goodness of the world. We grapple with the simultaneous length and brevity of our existence. We endure our storied life as a a collection of memorabilia that we have loved and lost. But then there is apocalyptic time, which is related but not identical. The veil has been lifted, and now we see ourselves on the brink. Systems are irredeemably broken, and injustice reigns. The word apocalypse translates to revelation, and its prophets look to different signs. There is wonderful and terrible clarity to apocalyptic time. The last chapter has been read, and now that it is too late, all the hidden facets of our stories are beginning to reveal themselves. There was a great drama all along in which our tender humanity, our worried hopes, were all interwoven. Most people, if they have any choice in the matter, will choose neither apocalyptic nor tragic time. They will live in pastoral time, Luke explains. Pastoral time is marked by the seasons, the sowing and reaping and herding that keeps the land tilled and the herds fenced. We are reminded why the title pastor comes from the word shepherd, because most of Christian ministry will be spent attending to everyday life. Bowler tells us that even though we live most of our lives in the pastoral time, the tragic and apocalyptic times mark and influence our lives and the paths of our journeys. These tragic and apocalyptic times are the opposite 
of the mountaintop experiences that we also have in life and that we remember reading before Lent on Transfiguration Sunday. But just like the mountaintop experiences, they influence our lives in very deep and meaningful ways. And just like the mountaintop experiences, they are brief. We neither live on the mountain or in the deepest valley. We live most of our days in the pasture. And both the psalmist and Isaiah remind us that God wants us to live in the pastoral time, in God's green and lush pastures. God wants us to remember that when we face tragic or or apocalyptic moments, that God is there waiting for us, waiting to provide for us, waiting to love us, waiting to lead us through those times, calling us back to the divine love that is the source of our being. God wants us all to live in abundance, no matter what else we have lived for, because God's abundance is sure and everlasting. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite all who are able to rise and say together our affirmation of faith in the form of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn is number 465, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
be seated. We have come to a time in our service where I invite you to share your joys, your concerns, your reasons to give thanks. Yes, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Yes. Sounds good, thank you. I can report um, this is a prayer of thanksgiving that um, the confirmation retreat yesterday at Johnsonburg was a wonderful success. God smiled upon us by, by giving us sun and warmth. Okay, maybe some black flies too, but we'll take it. Um, but um, our three confirmands and Linda Thorstensen and I spent a wonderful day there. There were about 50 confirmands um, from, from all four of the presbyteries from New Jersey. Um, so, so, the, so my request is that you keep all of the confirmands um, who were there yesterday in your prayers as they continue their confirmation and, and um, write their statements of faith. I can tell you that there is, that, um, there is grand fear and trembling among all of them for having to present their statements of faith to session, even though all the leaders tell them not to worry. But there is grand, there's grand fear and trembling in confirmands' hearts for those. But um, to keep them and their journeys and their mentors and their teachers and their pastors in your thoughts and prayers. It was a wonderful day at Johnsonburg. So also thank you for allowing us to go there. Are there others? We, of course, continue to keep the people of Ukraine in, in our, our thoughts and prayers. And with all that is on our hearts and our minds, let us turn to God in prayer, first with the silent prayers of our hearts. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this first day of spring for us, a day that we feel the sun's warmth on our faces and know that the ice and cold of winter is behind us. Warm our hearts as well, God, to be open to the call you have to each of us. Remind us of your care and your mercy. Remind us 
that you call us to do something that nobody else can do. And remind us always that we don't have to do it all. We only have to do our part. And when each of us does our part, you bless all of those small things and turn it into something miraculous. Remind us, holy God, when we forget. And it's so easy to forget. There are so many things that weigh on our hearts and our minds. There are so many things we have to get done each and every day that sometimes we feel like we are spinning and spinning and spinning and nothing happens. Slow us down, holy God. Remind us that in your time, all becomes right. In your time, we will find a way forward. In your time is peace. Holy God, on this day, our hearts have so many people and situations for which we turn to you in, in prayer. And so we pray, Holy God. We pray for all those people who grieve and mourn. We ask that they know your peace. We pray with all those people who celebrate and rejoice on this day, knowing that those celebrations are sweeter with your presence. We pray, Holy God, for all those people who are ill, in body, mind, or spirit. We ask that your healing presence be with them and that your guidance be with all who care for them. We pray, Holy God, for all those people who wrestle with questions that loom so large and answers that feel so small. We ask that they know your hope. We pray, Holy God, for all of those people who freely give of themselves in so many different ways so that we may lead our blessed lives. We ask that you keep them safe. And always, Holy God, we pray that there would be an end to violence and war and hatred and that your peace and your justice and your mercy come to all corners of our world. Lead us and guide us, holy God, to be your faithful people here and now, reminding others of your care and concern for every single one of us. We pray this prayer and all prayers in the name of the one you sent for us, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are called to the offering. Come, there is enough for everybody in God's world. May we share from God's bounty so everyone has their fill. You may leave your offering in the plate at the back of the sanctuary drop it in into the mailbox or mail it in or donate online.
God of grace, you You've fed our spirits, spirits and nourish our, our souls. souls. You, you have supported us in every possible. May the gifts we bring this morning be an offering of our gratitude. And may there be a promise to share what we have received from your hand. Amen. Our closing hymn is 375. Thank you.